Hello, good morning. How are you today? My name is Praise for Wowe. Um, and this is um, another episode of PF Things. Okay, so what am I up to? Now, um, I have been um, spending a lot of time, you know, getting back to my old books. And um, the way I read is such that when I have a book I love, I will buy two copies oftentimes and so that I can mark and then um, read them. Now, I went back to my book, uh, My Vision by Mohammed Ben Rashid Al Makatum, Challenges in the Rays of Excellence. You know, that's the founder, I mean, not the founder, that's the king of Dubai. And, um, you know, I, I saw some of my markings and um, I just became a bit sad yesterday as I began to read uh, because I marked these things three years ago and I'm shocked that Nigeria and um, a lot of countries in Africa don't seem to have moved away um, from what it has been. Now, um, the guy said that at the root of any new project is an idea, and if we cannot find a fresh concept for a project, we will not implement it because it will fall short of what we have come to expect. We believe that the shortest possible way to the bright future we seek lies in creative and pioneering approach. It says, although we are a small nation, we have enjoyed international exposure and we are managing and developing major projects in large and important countries such as India, South Korea, Hong Kong. The large number of creative, highly qualified, and motivated people who are head and staff of our team is some proof that our empowerment policy is working. Now, um, you know, reading through some of these parts of this book, uh, my mind rose, I mean, went back to my country, Nigeria, and I became more bordered, you know, because... It's become very evident right now that everything Nigeria has tried to run away from is coming back to bite Nigeria. We've run away from appointing proper leaders. We've run away from competence. We would rather do nepotism. And now that COVID-19 has kept everyone at home, nations with amazing leadership are moving on and they're becoming big. Even Senegal, Ghana have overtaken Nigeria while there's been no response from Nigerian government. Thank God for the governors of Lagos um, and Kaduna and maybe Ogun State and a few other people. But we have had no response. Even from Aso Rock, there has been no response. It's almost as if Aso Rock is lifeless. Now there is something fundamentally wrong. Any nation without a vision cannot get into the future. Any nation who is not saddled, who doesn't have visionary leaders, cannot get into the future, which is why Nigerian schools are closed, other nations have resumed, and we are pretending as if other nations are going to wait for us. So the way things are going, when other nations are in a new session, Nigeria will be thinking of how um, to get into third term. Why? Because we spent all our life thinking about oil and looting, and nobody thought about the future. So while other nations are deploying IT, to get into third term and they have made provisions for their children, we have made no provision because, number one, electricity has not been fixed and blah, blah, blah. But I've not come to rant about Nigeria. I've come to talk about you. It was David Ben-Gurion who made a statement many years ago. He said, all the experts are experts on what words. There is no expert of the future. To become an expert of the future, vision must replace experience, which means vision is very key. As we drive into the future, let me tell you, yes, people have said all kinds of things. People have postulated all kinds of things. But the person with a clear vision into the future is going to win. And where your future, your vision is powered by IT now today. Let me talk to you briefly about vision. I will not, I will not be able to finish it today, but I'll continue tomorrow. Now, vision, the popular, most popular definition for vision has been a mental picture of a preferred future. I always say that vision is your fastest jet from where you are to where you want to be. Vision is like pregnancy. Once you are pregnant, right, nobody will know, nobody will even believe you. If you're taken right now as a woman and you miss your period, because your tummy has not started protruding, a lot of people may not believe you. But that they don't believe you doesn't invalidate the fact that you're already pregnant because you miss your period. But as the pregnancy begins to grow, vision will determine what you wear. Because after a while, 
you will no longer be able to wear what you used to wear as a woman because your tummy will, dis- will change your entire wardrobe. Vision or pregnancy will determine what you do and in- that includes your mood. The moment you are pregnant, your mood to things will change. I have been impregnated a long time ago. So my mood and my reaction to things is not the way people react to things. When COVID-19 started, what did we do in Nigeria? People started singing. Um, COVID-19, be careful. Now express where they go. We started joking. We did not get into the lab. We did not proactively think of how to lock the nation down. Uh, maybe because we have vested interests. We have children of the I and mighty. We're still outside the country. So we delayed. And now our irresponsibility to the people and to ourselves is coming to bite an entire nation. Some states are still living in, I mean, they're still living in denial. Kano in Nigeria is troubled, right? So vision determines what you do. If you are a visionary leader, it will determine you will not be sentimental about what you need to do. Your vision determines where you go. Your pregnancy determines where you go. If you're a pregnant woman, you can't go everywhere. So your default response becomes no, not yes, right? Because you know what you carry. Your vision should determine your associate. Your pregnancy determines who you associate with. You can't associate with everyone because there are people that can terminate your pregnancy. Your pregnancy determines what you eat or your diet. You can't eat everything, right? Because there are things um, you eat that can terminate your pregnancy as well. So that talks about what you feed your mind with. There are speakers I cannot listen to. There are books I cannot read because it doesn't move me towards the actualization of my destiny. If your book is fear-driven, your message is fear-driven, Everybody's talking about the future. We're talking about IT. You are talking to me about demons. I have no time to listen to you because you still belong to the past and I want to go into the future. You cannot be driving me by fear because fear has torment and fear can paralyze. So when you are pregnant, it determines what you feed your mind with. It determines what you eat and it determines who handles you. Now, I want you to do a short exercise wherever you are. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to attempt to move around your room with your eyes closed, right? Wherever you are, close your eyes and don't cheat. I want you to attempt to move around where you are with your eyes closed. Attempt it. This should take you about um, one minute or two, so I'm going to wait for you and tell me what happens in your blind state. I need to pick your lessons. Attempt to move around with your eyes closed. Now, if you're done, you can open your eyes and you can write in the comment box what was happening to you in your blind state. Now, because you cannot feature in a future that you have not captured. It was a statement I made many years ago. A lot of us want to go into the future But how do you move into a future that you have not properly captured? Because when you are blind, a number of things begins to happen to you. Just like the exercise many of you just did right now. When you are blind, number one, you are dependent on other people. A blind man is not independent. He will need to depend on people to move him around. He will need to depend on people to show him the way. When you have no clarity about your life, you will have to depend on other people such that even when they are not correct... You will still need to follow them. As a blind man, it's easy to be deceived. You are susceptible to deception. What does that mean? If I say to you as a blind man, take me to um, Victoria Garden City, and you take me to Mushi Olosha, to a quiet place, and you tell me we are VGC, I may likely believe you, right? You know why? Because I don't even know where VGC is. I can't see. A blind man is so easily dis- is so easy to be deceived. And that's why a lot of people, even with their education, they are deceived by people who seem to be confident about their future, right? A lot of blind people are leading the blind people. So you see a professor who removes his shoe and walks barefooted because someone he considers spiritual says that you need to remove your shoe. It's so easy to be deceived when you have no vision. Number three, 
without a clear vision, you are helpless. A blind man is helpless. A blind man cannot help himself, so how can he help other people? Now, when I'm talking about blindness, I'm not just talking about physical blindness, because there are some people who are physically blind, but who are visionary. They ask Ellen Keller, what is worse than being blind? And she said, having sight without vision is worse than being blind, because Kovams is physically blind, but Kovams has a clear vision, so Kovams can see between Kobams and his driver, Kobams is the one who can see. His driver is the one who is blind because he's the one paying his driver, right? Vision, you know, without vision, with blindness, you are very helpless, right? You can't even help yourself. So how can you help someone else? If you go and meet a blind man who is begging on the road and you say, you know what? I have a need for two million. How does he help you? He doesn't even have, he can't help himself. Blind people are pitiable. If you have no vision for your life, it's so easy, you become pitiable. And let me explain what that means. If you pray for a blind man's son, and you say, may you become like your father. It was a prayer you made. He will not say amen. You know why? He doesn't want to become like his father because he understands the torture and the pain of being blind. Guys, you cannot afford to be blind in this season and time. Right? A blind man is pitiable. His child doesn't want to become like him. I love Adriyemi. You said you were very conscious because you were afraid you might injure yourself. People without vision are afraid. A blind man is afraid. He becomes unnecessarily conscious, so he can't run at the pace he should work. He can't move at the pace he should move. That's what happens when you are blind and you lack a vision for your life. A blind man is incapacitated. There are things he cannot do. Now, imagine a blind man. You are saying, hey, um, you know, people are coming to kill you and you need to run. How does he run? He doesn't have the capacity to run. Why? Because he cannot see. He's going to stumble. So when you are blind and you lack a vision, you are incapacitated. A blind man is ignorant. He's ignorant of many things happening around him. A blind man or a man without a vision cannot see beyond his nose, cannot even see the future, right? He's incapacitated, right, at all levels. He has no capacity for several things. He's ignorant of so many things. There are things he can't read. There are things he can't see. He's not even aware of what is happening around him. So he may put his food down and someone may take the food away. He's not aware that the food has been taken. He doesn't know who has taken the food. So that leads me to the next thing. A blind man is poor, right? If you see a man who is poor, ask for his vision because vision has the capacity to attract provision. Now, when was the last time you gave money to a bambiala or a beggar on the road? And how much did you give a beggar? I'm sure you would tell me you gave the beggar 20 naira, 50 naira if you live in Nigeria, one dollar if you live abroad, or one pound or some pound or something even less than that, maybe one pence. Why did you give the blind man 20 naira or 50 naira, right? At the time you gave him 20 naira or 50 naira, you add 1,000, you add 500 naira, you add 5,000 in your account. Why did you give him 50 naira? Because you always give blind people what you can pass away with. That means when you are blind, you will never be paid enough what you are worth. You will be paid out of pocket what they can part with. Or what you earn will not be what you are worth because you are not visionary and you can't see. Right? The same way you give blind man what you can part with is the same way your net worth is going to be small if you are blind and you can't see into the future. A blind man is poor. Next thing is a blind man is frustrated. Do you know what it means for a blind man to marry a wife he cannot see? On his wedding day, they say you may kiss the bride. He's going to kiss someone he cannot see, right? When his wife gives prayers or puts to bed, and they say, Babana boy, oh, you are put to, your wife has put to bed, she will not have a boy. He held, holds the child in his hand. A blind man does not have the capacity to recognize what his child looks like. Question is, are you blind or you are visionary? Let me tell you, friend. It is dangerous to be blind in this age and time because when you are blind, you are frustrated. Question is, what do you see? What do you see? Nigeria, our country, is in a state of blindness, right? We lack visionary leaders. But if your leaders lack a vision, you must not now slump to their lack of vision and now sleep with them on the same bed of visionlessness. You need to create a vision for yourself. Because 
at the aggregate of our vision is what will create a new Nigeria. It's been said that eyes that are, I mean, that look are common, but the eyes that see are very rare. The moment your eyes becomes open, the first thing you see is self-awareness. A lot of people are blind, and that's why they are not even self-aware that their life is going to on the edge. They are about to die, and they are not aware because they are like the frog sitting on the boiling water that is not clear of what is happening to him until all of them die, right? Self-awareness is key. The moment your eyes become open, you see yourself for who you are. You see yourself and the fact that you are frolicking with wrong people. You see what you wear. You see where you live. You see what you earn. And something gives you instruction that something is wrong here. Why? Because you now can see. The moment you can see, you now see that you are wearing rag. You now see that what you are handing is not enough for you. Right? Self-awareness is number one. The next thing that happens when you, are, you can see is environmental awareness. You now see your company. You realize that you have been moved with the wrong set of people. You have been talking to the wrong set of people. There are some of you listening to me today. You are a giant, but you have been moving with dwarfs because of low self-esteem. You do not believe in yourself enough that you can achieve certain things. So you hide yourself somewhere. You are afraid to make mistakes because you are afraid of what people... In fact, you are afraid to live your life because of what people will say. Yet you are already 40, right? You are 50. You don't even know exactly what you're doing with your life. So you keep following people who themselves don't know where they're going. The moment your eyes become open, environmental, where you look around and ask yourself, is this the best version of me? Why are you not a friend to billionaires? Why are you not a friend to inventors? Why are you not close to people who are movers and shakers of the globe? Especially in Nigeria, many of us follow people that we think are rich, who are very poor, when you convert their wealth to dollars, right? Because you follow people you think are popular in Nigeria, but are not popular across the globe because you have not left the country. The moment you go to the country and you get on the train and you ask for the popular names that you worship in Nigeria and you ask 10 people about them, you will be shocked that they are not known because the sphere they occupy is not a sphere that is under reckoning in any part of the world. People think of inventors, people think of industrialists, they don't feature in those spheres. So many of the people you want to run around, you want to bow to, you think will make your future desirable are not known for any invention across the globe. Are you not endangered? The moment you see clearly, you will see environmental awareness, right? That something is wrong somewhere. I'm moving the wrong people. The next thing that happens when your eyes become open is your destiny becomes very clear. Your future becomes very clear that you can draw it, right? The moment your future becomes very clear to you to say, I am Tokwe, 10 years down the line, this is what I see. You will no longer be comfortable with your presence. Once your future is clear, one thing that happens to you is that you experience discomfort. Whatever you can tolerate, you will not change it. The moment I caught a vision for my life, I was living in Ajegunle, what happens to me was I became uncomfortable with that environment. Every time I moved around that environment, I began to count, praise, your days are numbered here. The same thing, the moment your eyes become clearly open, you will no longer be comfortable with mediocrity. You will know, I can no longer listen to this person about grown what I'm listening to. This is not the kind of message I need for my life right now. This is not the kind of mentoring I need. This is not the kind of um, you know, discussions I want to get involved with. This is not the kind of books I want to be reading. This is not a kind of association I want to frolic myself with. I want to go global. I cannot afford to sit with what is local. I cannot be sitting with conversations that doesn't make sense. Everyone is thinking of vaccine. We are talking about God forbid. God forbid. People are dying in Kano. We are saying pray for Kano. What is our response? We have no response. People are dying across the world. We have no response. We are waiting for... World Health Organization to invent a vaccine that Nigeria can buy. Nigeria cannot help themselves. Senegal is helping Africa. They are helping themselves. They are creating low-cost ventilators. Senegal is creating, um, working on vaccine. Madagascar is working on vaccine. 
Even the people who have cure in Nigeria, Nigerian government is not even paying attention to them. The moment your eyes become open and you can see clearly your destiny, you become uncomfortable with where you are. There are things you will drop. The kingdom is like a man, a trespasser, who found the treasure in his field and went to sell everything he owns to go and buy that field. He went to give up every title he has been given to go and buy the future. He went to drop everything, mediocrity that has helped him bound, what they have given him that he doesn't merit. What, so he, becomes, he has become a king in the eyes, one eye king in the eyes of the, in the land of the blind of Kels. Of course, what kind of king will he be? I was facilitating a session one day, and a man came to meet me, was a chief in his village, and he said to me, praise I thought I was alive, but after your session, I realized I was dead and I've been leading people because I was the most intelligent among them. But how intelligent can Jabesh be when Jabesh is the king of fools, right? When Jabesh is sorrow, but is the most honorable among his brothers. So the moment your vision becomes clear and you become uncomfortable, the next thing is you begin, you begin to desire and you begin to aspire. What does that mean? Nothing moves until you move. You begin to desire the future you see and you begin to aspire for it. The difference between desire and aspiration is action. You begin to take action in the direction of the future you see. I have taken some strategic steps in the last two years of my life that is unbelievable. And it's unbelievable how the future opened itself up to me. Number six, with the moment you begin to aspire, next in a strategic movement. What route must I take? The wrong route does not lead to the right destination. Let me say this to you. If you sit in a car going to Abuja and your destination is BGC, and when, meanwhile you have gone to enter a bus going to Abuja, but you want to go to VGC, and the bus is entering Kogi, and you back it up with prayer, and you back it up with fasting, and you enlist all the prophets, all the spiritual head, to pray for you so that you can land in Abuja, in, in VGC safely, Victoria Garden City safely, and they join you in prayer, and the whole world form a prayer chain, and they begin to pray, God of heaven, let this guy arrive VGC, let this guy arrive VGC, let me shock you, brother, no matter their prayer, you are not going anywhere, that's the way we lead, live our life in Nigeria, we pray when we are ready in the bus going nowhere, we pray to land in the right destination, let me tell you, you cannot abdicate your responsibility to God, it was a wise man, I think Dr. David Oedipo said, any prayer that you pray that makes God solely ab responsible for your desires is an irresponsible prayer. What you need to do is, as a human being, activate your brain, activate your common sense. Yes, it's good to pray, but you need to ask yourself, where exactly do I want to go? What route can take me to where I want to go? And there are people who are already where you want to go. What route did they take? Can you understand or research the route they take and follow that route? If they have succeeded and the route is principle-based, you will arrive there. You cannot be in a bus going to Abuja when you want to go to VGC and be backing yourself up with prayers. You are never going to land in VGC. You will land in Guagalada. Guagalada will take you to Karu. Karu will take you to Maitama. Maitama will take you. By the time you keep moving, you are on your way to Cardinal. If you insist and you are still praying on that route, you are on your way from Cardinal to Joss, from Kano, from Joss like this, you are heading towards Adamawa. From Adamawa, the next place you will land is Cameroon. Because after Madagali in Adamawa State, you are headed to Cameroon, right? But you want to go to VGC. So I tell people progress is not often forward movement. Don't let people deceive you. People tell you progress is moving forward. No, moving forward in what their direction. Sometimes progress is coming down from that bus and going back to the park to say, you know what? I'm already in Guagualada. I want to go to VGC. This road will never lead me to VGC. Let me go back. So that is what people call retrogression. Retrogression is progress. The time the, 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 is retrogression is progress, which is determined by where you actually want to go. So if I'm moving forward and my destination is at my back, progress will be to turn back, right? So don't let anybody fool you. you the wrong route does not lead to the right destination. So you need to ask yourself, what path can take me to where I want to go? The next thing is, go for it. Don't let anybody restrict you. Turn your motion into movement. You will make mistakes, yes, but you will learn from your mistakes. You will fail forward. Question is, where do you want to go with your life this morning? When you sit in a boat in the ocean and relax, the current will take you to wherever it's going, even if you don't want to go there. So if you sit in a boat and begin to pray, 
God, in Jesus' name, don't let this uh, boat take me anywhere. The waves will take you to... Because you need to paddle the boat and direct it in the direction it should go, right? But if you don't do that, it will take you anywhere. Question is, where do you want to go with your life this morning? Guys, where do you want to go with your life this morning? Where do you want to go with your life this morning? Don't be depending on another person to show you the way. You need to sit down after this broadcast and visualize where exactly do you want. I held the class for singles yesterday, and one of the things I said is that a lot of people never marry the person they truly love because there's some brain conditioning in their brain that disqualifies that person, maybe tribe or race or religion or something like that, you know. So they go for the next best person or the person they don't love, and a lot of them are in crisis in their marriage. Vision births discipline. Vision defines you and refines you. Vision will transform you. Vision attracts provision. Your vision will live after you. Vision makes your life intentional. Without a vision, life becomes experimental. You begin to grow up, up and down. Vision brings focus and focus creates speed. Where do you want to go with your life? Please, it is time to own your life and put it in your end and define exactly where you want to go and find the route that can take you to where you want to go. Trust me, vision will preserve you. I want to thank you so much for everyone who has joined this morning. we we'll meet again 3 a.m. tomorrow. I really, really appreciate all of you join every day. I do not take it for granted. Have a fantastic day. Be visionary. Be, be, be real. Be yourself. Follow your art. Go to where you want to go. You're only you can see the future. Only you have the pregnancy. Everybody may not believe you, but as your pregnancy begins to materialize and your tummy begins to come out, they will begin to believe you. No vision speaks at the beginning. Every vision speaks at the end. Follow it. Make sure you are making progress. And make sure that your steps are guided. Thank you very much for joining me. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.